Hello and welcome back to Property Matters on Dublin South FM and on iProperty Radio with myself, Carol Tallon. You can contact us on social media at iProperty Radio or email hello at iPropertyRadio.com. Joining us today is a returning guest, Tom Gilligan, Director of Services at Mayo County Council. Tom, you're very welcome. It's been a while since we've spoken to you directly. It has, Carol. It's been too long, but listen, del- delighted uh, and thanks so much for the invitation. Delighted to be back. You're welcome anytime. And the reason I say it's a long time since we've spoken to you directly is because, as I mentioned to you off air, I think you might, yourself and Rona Lyons are probably our two most quoted guests <laughs> or reference guests on the show when I'm talking to anybody. And you have been so welcoming to uh, innovators who have new ideas about how to possibly stimulate housing supply. Um, so Mayo County Council has definitely been one of the front runners um, in this. So I know you've been very welcoming to startups across the prop tech and construction tech space. So thank you so much. Uh, we we always appreciate that. Um, so look, I mentioned well, thank that, you, that you are the Director of Services with Mayo County Council. And uh, I, is it really in that capacity or was it almost in a private capacity that you were one of the early driving forces of vacathomes.ie? So you might just take us back to the genesis of that because we, while we've spoken about it before in the show and we've referenced it so many times, this initiative really got state support. It's turned into policy and now it is a really important part, a really important part of the strategy as to how we get new supply back into the marketplace. Yeah, that that that, that that's right, Carolyn. Once again, thanks for the opportunity to to, uh, to talk to you today. Yeah, vacanthomes.ie. Well, look, I suppose really as regards vacant homes and the whole issue in relation to vacancy and dereliction, I've always had a huge passion in this area. You know, and um, you know, I've worked in both the, the the private and the public sectors, but I suppose particularly I suppose within my role at the moment uh, in housing as a director of services in Mayo. Um, Housing and the supply of housing has always been so, something that's been of huge interest to me. And it was really stemming back from the time of rebuilding Ireland and when rebuilding Ireland came out. And I was delighted at that time, I suppose, in relation to the, the, the dimension of, of, you know, using existing stock and re- revitalizing, I suppose, a, 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 existing stock and bringing vacant homes back into use. Because I suppose at the time, uh, the census 2016 indicated 183,000 vacant homes um, and I mean based here in, in Mayo we have so much vacancy and dereliction unfortunately or in, you know in our towns in our villages and it really is a blight in our society and it has such a negative impact um, not just on the housing aspect of it but also on the community side as well so I suppose the whole idea of vacant homes that I came about from um, my initial thinking in relation to how are we going to solve this problem? And I found with the whole issue of vacant homes, one of the major issues around it was that people were, were wondering why, why is a property vacant? And every vacant home has a story to tell. And the whole idea around vacanthomes.ie is that it's a crowdsourcing initiative. So local people obviously have the local knowledge. And what we're asking people to do is that if they come across a vacant home in their area, they might be out going for a walk or a ro- run, etc. And if they see a vacant home in the area, to log it on to vacanthomes.ie, an alert is then sent to the vacant home officer in each local authority. And I suppose it's their role at that stage then to follow up in order to try and bring that vacant home back into use as quickly as possible. So it's it's relying so much, I think, and, and it, it does from the point of view of asking the public and asking people in their communities to, to come on board and to help everyone, help us, I suppose, in a sense, solve, solve the housing crisis. Because it's, it's a problem that affects every single individual uh, in, in our community. So I think it's a great opportunity and a great way for, instead of putting the, the, the power into, into certain people's hands, I think with Vacant Homes.ie, it gives the power, it, gives, it allows the, the power to go into everyone's hands and in order for everyone else to provide a solution in order to bring those vacant homes back into use. So we're, we're delighted with the success of the, of, of the project and the initiative so far. And as I say, we, we, we just, you know, at this stage, I suppose we, we, we want to see it grow and grow and get more vacant homes back into use. You know, I, I think it's interesting, Tom, from the from the genesis of this in the first year or two, people were starting to get engaged as in the community was starting to get engaged because 
planning and and housing is everybody's business. You know, it, it it's something that um the community should be very involved in. But uh, you know, I I think it's fair to say over the past two decades, I don't believe there were people were very engaged. I think it's only in the past five years, and particularly since COVID, that actually communities have become so engaged in what's happening um in their local community, and unfortunately, that's manifesting maybe in a lot of objections or criticisms or, or seen as, as challenges. And part of me thinks that that's almost a a correction that needed to happen because people weren't engaged at all. And then we started to get them engaged, but only those who felt strongly in the negative were becoming engaged. Whereas I think the challenge going forward is to really put across the, the message that living within the community, housing, is everybody's business. So we Absolutely. want people involved in the positive and the negative. And that's why I think the crowdsourcing element was so powerful. Um, but right now, there's such a huge amount of public anger and frustration around people. So actually dealing with um, or, or trying to get access to vacant properties that, that people identify is one of the biggest inquiries that we get. And it's also one of the biggest sources of innovation that startups are working on. But one of the challenges they have is that the owners of these properties don't identify themselves as the owners of vacant properties. They're either not present. They have almost not not forgotten that they have a, an interest in this. But usually, um, so, for example, one of the, some of the examples we've seen are, you know, where there was a property that was left to a family member and that family member is not living in Ireland and other family members have an interest. So it never gets settled. Nobody yeah. feels like they own it fully. And so part of the challenge is a lot of these vacant properties, they're not the title isn't straightforward to bring them back. So what has been your experience or the experience of the vacant home officers around the country that you're dealing with? Absolutely, Carolyn, you're right. I mean, you've, you've, you've hit the nail on the head. I think one of the biggest challenges I suppose we face in relation to bringing vacant properties back into use is that. And, and even the first instant there of just trying to, you know, identify who the owner is. And, and you're right. I mean, there are people who are walking around today that don't realize that they, they probably do own or, or, or have a part ownership in a vacant property. Um, and, you know, we, we come across stories every day whereby, you know, vac- vacant properties are there and, you know, even asking what, well, what we do, I suppose, in a sense, what, what the, the crowdsourcing aspect of it does for us is that it allows us, those neighbors to, to, you know, and people in the community to maybe provide that little nugget of information that, that, that can help to unlock, that could be the key to unlock the, the, the potential around this vacant property. But you're right, I mean, there, there are people who, who have a vacant property and own a vacant property, but probably don't realise it. They might be left it in, in a will. And then there are properties that are tied up in probate. So if there are uh, issues, and you know, you, you will have um, a fam- family and siblings that are probably are a part ownership of a property, and for them to agree what to do with the property, you know, I remember one particular property and, you know, there was about five uh, in, in the family and, you know, I think two of them wanted to um, uh, wanted to sell it. The other two wanted to do it up. And the, 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 the final uh, sibling didn't didn't want anything done at all with it. Nearly it was nearly as a, as a monument to the to the, to the family member that had lived there before. So getting agreement as to what to do is absolutely, absolutely critical. Um but I think in time of, uh, that we are in such a housing crisis at the moment and there is such a lack of properties available, I, I really do think that we have a moral responsibility and an ownership. We need to take ownership of this issue and we need to bring these properties back into use. I, I don't think we have any choice around this at this stage and we need to be doing everything we can. And I would urge anyone who has a vacant property uh, and you know they, they either own it or a part ownership, do what you can to bring that property back into use. Please, please don't have it sitting there, um, you know, falling into dereliction, becoming an area where, where that might attract antisocial behavior. That That is having such a negative impact on, on, on your community, you know, and you know, you're not being a good neighbor if you have a vacant property and if it falls into dereliction and it's impacting on the community. Because it, apart from the, the, the housing aspect of it, I mean, when you think of the properties around that derelict property or vacant property, I mean, it, it's in, it's impacting economically as well, you know. And it, 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 you know, studies have shown it does have, you know, mental health um, issues around this as well because no one wants to be coming out and looking at a, a, a derelict site 
or derelict property because it's, you know, it's just reflects very bad on the community. And you're right what you were saying before, you know, particularly with, with like the tidy towns groups and, and people that have such pride in their communities and people go out and pick litter every, every Saturday or Sunday or in the evening time. I mean, you know, they, they want to keep an area clean. They want to keep, keep it looking fresh. And they want to, you know, to ensure that people are able to live in and have a good quality of life. And that's yeah. why I think we have such an onus on us to bring vacant properties back into use. But apart from the fact in relation to ownership, I said there's so many reasons why properties are vacant. You know, uh, identifying the owner, then the property could be in probate. You have instances as well where, where owners don't have the financial um, means in order to bring that property back into use. And that, that can be a problem as well. Also, uh, as well, you know, I'm coming across owners that, that aren't motivated to bring that property back into use. You know, they're, 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 they're saying, well, look, they're, they're sitting on the property and they might be wanting to speculate and say, well, look, it might increase in value. And they don't realize actually how valuable that property is. Do you that's, think, the, that's the key thing, you know. Do you think the state is doing enough in terms of even the introduction of, of um, fines and, and taxes on vacant property? Do you think the state is doing enough? You know, we talk about the carrot and the stick, and I think there are, there are a number of carrots now in terms of new policies over the last 18 months. But do you think the sticks are, are strong enough? Well, I do agree with your what you're saying there. I think I think it needs that carrot and stick approach. And I suppose, look, I suppose we we've had, um, particularly now with the revenue coming on board as well, we've had the whole idea of the vacant home tax, and the introduction of, of, of that, which is which is good. You know, we have in relation to you know property and and land site levies as well. And I think that they're very positive. And the other thing as well, I think what's happening is. And I very much welcome the, the whole aspects of relations to the Creek Cunaha and the vacant property refurbishment grant, whereby, um, you know, someone who wants to use the property as, as their principal pri- private residence, you know, they either get a grant of 30,000 if it's vacant, or that will be topped up by an additional 20,000 to, to 50,000 if the property is vacant. So I think, you know, all that is good and all that is positive. Um, but you know the the reality is we probably need to do more. We need to see more. I mean, it's very interesting that the latest census, twenty twenty two, identified uh, nationally over one hundred sixty six thousand vacant properties in, in in this country, which is still you know a sizable a sizable amount. And that uh, excludes holiday homes. Absolutely, it? absolutely, uh, Carol. Like and I, like here in Mayo as well. I mean, the census indicated that, you know, for 2022, that we, we have 9,166 um, vacant homes. And in addition to that, we have in excess of 5,000 holiday homes. So, I mean, there is such a level of vacancy and such a high level of vacancy that, you know, we need to do whatever we can in order to bring properties back into use. So, look, I, I, I welcome the initiatives that that, that, that that have happened, I, I think that there's certainly steps in the, in the right direction. Um, but it's up to people now as well. And I think, you know, we, we all have to take ownership of this. And we, you know, it's not, it's not fair, I think, or it's not down to just one minister or one government or one department. I think that the onus and the responsibility lies in all of us in order to do what we can to bring vacant properties back into use. Because, I mean, you know, there are so many people at this stage you know, that, that need a home. We're seeing record levels of homelessness. We're seeing so many young people and, you know, younger generation that are trapped at home, basically, with, 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 with mom and dad that want the opportunity to go out and own a home of their own, you know. And, and I, I think, you know, it's, it's terrible that people are, are not able to have that opportunity. And we, and we need to do this because home ownership is just so, so key and so important. And I think it is a key, a key pillar of the, you know, it is a key pillar within the Housing for All program as well. So, look, I, 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 we, we've made, there are positive steps happening, but, you know, we still have a long way to go yet. Um, Tom, I often call you one of the most um, open to innovation. So one of the most innovative and open to innovation, um, you know, director of services around the country. And that's really reflected in, in some of the work that Mayo County Council has done. But you're working on a really interesting project that we have profiled on the show previously. But you might just talk us through it and maybe other local authorities listening in 
um, you know, might be able to kind of benefit from some of the insights you're experiencing. So um, we previously interviewed uh, Colin Casey of Homebuyers Hero, a really interesting proposition. But Mayo County Council have taken this a step further. Um, so you might just talk us through that matchmaking pilot. Yeah, and thanks, Caroline. Look, yeah, it, it, it's great at the moment. I, I suppose from our point of view, um, yes, you know, there is a vacant homes match, my, matchmaking pilot that we've launched here in Mayo. And um, I suppose, you know, first of all, I suppose I want, I want to thank uh, Colum and Home Buyers Hero and also the Housing Finance Agency uh, need to get a mention as well, because I suppose, you know, th- that has provided the funding to us in order to, to, to commence this p- partnership in, and you know, collaborating with, with Colum Casey and Home Buyers Hero. And I suppose the idea of that, I suppose, in the sense that this will enable Mayo County Council in collaboration with Home Buyers Hero to bring um, vacant homes uh, and potential vacant homes back into use. So what we want to do and how the pilot will work is that Mayo County Council, we we will assess uh, vacant properties, compile a list of suitable homes. And what we're doing at the moment is that we're writing to those owners and encouraging them to take, to participate in the pilot. Um, And then what will happen then is that prospective home buyers, and there are so many of them out there, they will be able to view these properties on the Home Buyers Hero website. Um, and that will allow them, I suppose, to declare an interest in the property. And this pilot is, is aimed at those people that, who want to make that property their principal private residence. And that's, you know, that's key. And when enough people then are interested in a particular property and Home Buyers Hero will, will establish how many uh, pr- 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 prospective buyers would be willing to uh, to buy or purchase that 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 property, then you know we'll be able to set up, I suppose, in the sense that the property owner then will be able to you know get a good idea how much that property is valued because that's one of the key problems at the moment is that vacant homeowners don't know how much um, um, their property is worth. You know, a lot of them yeah. believe and are being told that their property is worth anything, but they need to realise, I suppose, in the sense that there is a market there for these vacant homes. And that there are potential buyers that are coming and, and need, you know, they, they, they want to engage. Just one thing in relation to that, going back to the vacanthomes.ie, um, and in talking to the vacant home officers in, in the local authorities, I mean, one of the, the key things we do get constantly is that, you know, people who are out walking and they come to us and they say, look, I've come across a vacant home and I want to, you know, what do I, I'd love to live here. You know, I'd love to be, I would love that home to be my, my home. And they're inquiring as to how they can do, the, do that. So there's no doubt about it. I think the Vacant Homes Match Vacant Pilot will, will do that. And I suppose in a sense, um, what, what, you know, we, one of the key aspects around this as well, that we, what we want to do is that we want to look at potential solutions because there are, there are so many challenges, I think, to bringing a vacant home back into use. It's not just, um, you know, identifying the owner, getting the owner to engage, and they're getting the buyers ready. But then it's obviously getting mortgages around that as well. So as well as it's working with banks and other mortgage lenders around that in order to bring those properties back into use. So I suppose what we're doing is that, you know, a starting pool of about initially, I suppose, an, you know, in excess of 50. And what we want to do is get the, those, those um, potential home buyers um, uh, on board. And there's a, there's a significant list at the moment. And then have the property owners as well. So really, in a sense, it's matchmaking. It's really, as of bringing two people together, and and it, uh, you know, it's 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 sort of it, it, in a sense, it's, it's bringing them together. And look, it, there will be some ins- instances where the property owner might be um, reluctant to sell the property owner. So what we're saying is that look, in some cases, as a last resort, we might have to look at utilizing our CPO powers as well in order to bring that property back into use. But what we really want to see is vacant homeowners coming coming on board uh, and potential home buyers as well, and matching the two together. And we see this as a great initiative in order to do that, in order to to help increase the supply of housing going forward. Yeah, look, I, I think it's a fantastic one. It's definitely one we're watching closely with interest, and I hope other local authorities around the country are, are doing the same. Um, do you envisage that these properties? would come under then the Creek Renaha uh, scheme that they would actually come in line for potentially refurbishment grants? Absolutely, Carol. I mean, one of the key things about this, what we, we want to see is that we want to see these homes turn into 
someone's, you know, own home as a principal private uh, uh, home residence. And that's what we're doing. We're encouraging, I suppose, in a sense, because the great thing about this, uh, w- once <coughs> the person then owns this home, then they will have access then to the Creek on have grants and the, the vacant property refurbishment grant. And as I already mentioned, I mean, you have 30,000 there for a vacant property and then 50,000 for a property is, is derelict. Now, the reality is it will take more money, obviously, than that. Yeah. in some cases, to bring the property back into use. But at least it gives someone a very good start and gives them a good motivation in order to do it. So that's what we would, we really are as well looking for that because it, it is, and I think one of the t- key things around this pilot and this working with, with, with uh, Home Buyers Hero um, is that we do want to see home ownership and we want to encourage more and more people to have the opportunity to own their own home. You know, I, I working in the housing here in Mayo, I, and I say this to people, the, the best days that I have here is, and the greatest days and the most joyous days are those days when you hand a key to someone, to their own front door. And I mean, to see, you know, I've seen people literally in tears when they do that because they are just so excited. They're so overcome with emotion um, that it's just great to see. And, I, and I, we want to see that replicated many, many, many times. We want to see people having and, their own front door and, and having their own property. Tom, I, you know, I, I love that. And I think that that's exactly what we should be aspiring to here, um, not just in Mayo, but for all of Ireland. And, you know, you referenced the mortgages as being a potential issue. Is there some way that the local authority home loans could be adjusted slightly for this? Because we know um, to the end of last year, um, it was a it was a minority of people who were getting approval. I think it was something like twenty five percent of people were getting approval, and only there at the start of February, um, there was some changes to the home loan scheme. You know, increasing the limits um, for all local authority areas. Uh, you know, I I wonder is there some way that that could be fortified? To well, it's certainly something. Yes, Carol, I think it's something we 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 will look at. It's certainly something we, we, in conjunction with the pilot. And as I said, there will, be, there will be a number of learnings to come out of this and a number of things that we, we certainly will, will take from and see if we can change and tweak things in order to make it, you know, uh, more attractive, more, more accessible for people. Because ultimately, I think we, you know, it, it's so important that we bring these properties back into use. And I think in a sense, you know, you know we, we are going down, as I said, there's, there's a lot of good initiative, initiatives out there. But look, as I said before, the work isn't done yet. And there's more things that need to be done and have to be done in order to, to, to take up, to have more people own their own homes. You know, Tom, so, very little very little makes me optimistic around um, the delivery of new housing supply. And that includes bringing properties back, back into use. Uh, very little makes me optimistic. But actually, uh, the work that you're doing um, together with the team there at Mayo County Council, I think is really heartening. And, Thanks, uh, you know, uh, and I'm so impressed with Colin Casey and the Homebuyer Heroes team. And in fact, you know, actually, I'd, I encourage anybody to take a look at their website because they have a range of different initiatives, not just around vacant homes, but around um new new uh, built homes as well that might be of benefit or and of interest to local house builders. So um, innovation, innovation unlocks so much. That's right. And I think, you know, when you're looking at innovation and what, and what technology and innovation has, has done, I mean, look, we've seen what it's done in relation to Uber and uh, in, in relation to, um, you know, taxis. We've seen what Airbnb has done in relation to, you know, the tourism industry. And, you know, in a way, I suppose, you know, it'll be, you know, it'll be interesting to see what, what this pilot um, that we're doing now here in Mayo in, in collaboration with home buyers here, you know, will, will it, will it, will it, will it manifest itself into in, into the next sort sort of dot com um, uh, initiative that that will be transformative and and you know a lot of this is around disrupting the industry as well and that's something I think we have to do. I mean, we you know we have to disrupt the industry to some degree and we have to bring in these new initiatives because um, it's so important and I mean. Property I've I have found over the years it's very been very much as was a bricks and mortar, but the, the the technology and the ways of delivery are changing and we're seeing that as well with the whole aspects of relation to modular homes is coming in, coming to the fore more and more. So I think I think you know the time is right to be doing these sort of in, innovative uh, approaches and these innovative solutions, and uh, you know we 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 need to do that because 
you know, as you say, that, that you know, at the moment, I suppose we are in a crisis. We're, we're, in, we're in, in, you know, with this housing crisis and we need to do whatever we can and whatever solutions we come up with, we need to, we need to trial them in order to see whether they, they, they'll have an impact. Yeah, you know, I'm so delighted to hear you say that. So actually the one takeaway, I'm hoping that any other local authorities listening in or any other state bodies, um, you know, would really take that actually the importance of exploring emerging technologies Absolutely. and innovation Absolutely. and actually trying it because that's such a vital first step um, in order to establish proof of concept and see how impactful it could be. Absolutely. And the other thing as well, I mean, one of the great things about this and it, it you know, this is, the, you know, the pri- and a great example of the private and the public sector working together. And I think, they, look, it, it it is going to, that 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 you know that 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 whole of agency approach, and it is you know we, we need to do that. You know we yeah. we you know it's not as I said before it's not just one, you know department or one agency or whatever. I I do think we need a, a, a whole a whole of agency and a whole of body approach in relation to this in order to 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 address this issue. So it's great to see, and all the the benefits with working with Cullum is that it's great to be working with someone in in in, in um on the other side if you know what I mean. So. Um, you know, so but we need to see more of that. So I would encourage anyone that has any ideas or anything that they want to do, you know, I'm reaching out to people at this stage to get in contact with me and we see if we can work with them in order to try and bring, the, bring, the, bring these solutions to bear. Uh, Tom, that that call out will be absolutely circulated across PropTech Thanks. Ireland Thanks, and and MMC Ireland for those innovating across the construction side. So um, thank you. We genuinely appreciate that. Um, you know, and uh, look. I'll, I'll close by echoing your sentiments between public and private sector collaboration. More of this. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. That was Tom Gilgan, Director of Services at Mayo County Council. We need to take a quick break. Stay tuned. <laughs>